This is Coyote News. USD has 10 different sanctioned sports for women's athletics, but that wasn't always the case. Coyote News' Carly Phillips is live in the muck to tell us more about the 50th anniversary of Title IX at USD. Carly? Thanks, Callie. I'm here with Athletic Director David Herbster to talk a little bit about Title IX and its role here at USD. David, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Now, as we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX, what are some of the biggest things that you've noticed that seem to have impacted student athletes the most? Uh, part of it, I think, is really not only the sports offerings uh, that we have for the student athletes themselves, um, but I think what's is the success of our student athletes, the facilities uh, that we've been able to build to provide opportunities for our student athletes, I think has really been impactful. Um, but more importantly, it's about how we treat it, look to treat every single student athlete as an individual. Um, and, and I think that just the culture of being a family, I think, is what's really helped us move forward. And how is the athletic department working to make sure that student athletes at USD know what Title IX is and know how they're protected under it? Uh, it's interesting because as we do explain to all of our student athletes what Title IX is, it's sometimes it's, it's hard to grasp. I, and it's much different now than it was, let's say, 25 years ago. Uh, right now, so many of our female athletes have grown up under the umbrella uh, that Title IX has provided the offerings or the sports offerings uh, and the insurance that they have there's equity and equality and access to sports. Many of our female athletes really don't know what Title IX is because they've never known anything different other than opportunities. And so, you know, our faculty athletic rep, Dr. Jessica Messer-Smith, will spend a little bit of time uh, touching on it. Uh, but we really don't spend a whole lot of time talking about it uh, because I do think what they feel when you're here is, you know, sports might, there, there's different needs that different sports has. Uh, but overall, what we've tried to provide for all of our student athletes is an equitable opportunity and access to competition and training. And so how does USD work to ensure that they're up to, up to code with Title IX? Sure. So there's three different ways that you can comply with Title IX, and there's three different prongs. And we, we use kind of what's called the third prong, which is interest and abilities. So that means surveying not only our current student athlete population, uh, but also working with a consultant to kind of evaluate our whole, the whole region that we participate in to make sure that we're offering the sports out there uh, that students are interested in. And you used to play basketball at Virginia mm -hmm. Tech at one point. Have you noticed any major changes with Title IX since then and, and I guess in the era that we're in now? Uh, I think it's almost night and day. Uh, there weren't, back in the early 80, 1980s, and I, and I am dating myself, there weren't really as many opportunities for, for girls and females in sports. There weren't so many, there, were, there weren't summer camps, there wasn't summer access, club sports, things like that, all the different offerings that we have now. So I think for, for the youth growing up, the offerings are exponentially more, but seeing how sports are treated in college, I can tell you now uh, it, there's a much more equitable treatment and, and support and emphasis on women's athletics than certainly 30 years ago. David, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Live in the muck for Coyote News, I'm Carly Phillips. Thanks, Carly. Title IX helps ensure equal opportunities for all students.